And this, combined with all the earlier points, is how you can successfully finish the story of Captain Jack Sparrow. It's how you can make Pirates of the Caribbean 6 great. As much as the first three Pirates movies hold a very special place in my heart, in 2011 my heart became a bit confused with the addition of the fourth entry to the franchise, Unstretched Tides. See, it's not really an especially bad movie, it's not a disgrace that I need to ignore the existence of the Stay Sane, it's not like the fifth movie where they completely butcher the character of Jack Sparrow. Just the opposite, here Jack Sparrow is done incredibly well in both acting and writing, to the point where he actually is the greatest strength of the movie. I've mentioned this before, but the scene in King George's Palace, for example, is a pitch-perfect showcase of the core that makes Captain Jack Captain Jack. He's a mad genius disguised as a harmless fool whose actions always carry meaning. When he's brought in as a prisoner, the reason he's glancing at the balcony and the window is because he's already planning his escape. The reason he's obsessively trying to get the cream puff is for the movie to organically introduce the chandelier. The reason he's acting like an annoying idiot is in an effort to get himself free from his chains, which he does. And then there's the chain the handkerchief, it's all a string of ingeniously written setups which amount to an ingenious trademark Jack Sparrow payoff. But despite Captain Jack bringing his absolute A-game, this film overall still for some weird reason just doesn't work. Again, it's not necessarily because it's especially bad, but more so because something about it just doesn't feel right. There's something very off about it. I could never put my finger on what that was exactly, but for some reason in my heart I always felt like even though I was watching a Pirates movie, what I was watching wasn't actually a Pirates movie. And now I finally understand that's because it isn't, because in reality, Unstranger Tides is an imposter pretending to be a Pirates movie. It's an entirely separate film that snatched Jack Sparrow up into being in it against his will and then slapped the name Pirates of the Caribbean on the cover. That's the reason my heart always felt iffy about it. That's the reason this movie does not work. And today we're gonna sail further into what that means and why it is. Why we have a real proper pirate sequel that doesn't come off as a real proper pirate sequel. Here's how to make a franchise entry that isn't a true functional part of the franchise, but more like a forced, cheaply produced commercial movie tie-in you'd find in a kid's cereal box. The first core reason why this film feels less like a real pirates movie and more like something you get when you order a happy meal is because our main hero isn't relevant to anything that happens in it. The main plot of On Stranger Tides is all about finding the fountain of youth, which is something they did set up at the end of At World's End. But the issue is that when the movie begins, Jack isn't actually trying to find the fountain and doesn't seem to have any real concrete interest in finding it. Meaning, you gave up. Instead, he just keeps hearing that someone else named Jack Jack Sparrow is trying to find it. Jack Sparrow's in London with a ship and looking for a crew. I am not. You have come to London to procure a crew for your ship. This is rumor not true. I heard you're putting together a crew. I heard where you're headed. The fountain. If enough people keep saying it, it must be true. For the first half an hour, we're not watching Jack go on his own important quest, but instead watching him coming across someone else's quest and then being like, hmm, I guess I could find out more because I have nothing better to do. As in, it's like this movie is not a Jack Sparrow movie, but instead some entirely other movie that lures him in and then forces him to be a part of it. And if you think I'm exaggerating, the first act ends with Jack literally being drugged and dragged along onto the quest of finding the fountain. And so 
overall this whole launching pad feels less like a real pirate's entry and more like a McDonald's tie-in story that just happens to have Jack Sparrow from Pirates in it. At the one hour mark the movie finally begins at least trying to give Jack his own reasons to find the fountain but even then it never really commits to any of those reasons and they just come off as sorry unfunctional excuses. At first Jack's motive to find the fountain is so that he can get the pearl back from Blackbeard but then getting the pearl back is never actually linked to finding the fountain in any way and instead is just forgotten entirely until the very end. Then Jack's motive to do it is in order to survive because Blackbeard has this voodoo doll of him that he tortures but pretty soon that too is just tossed aside. Then the motive is to save the life of Angelica because Blackbeard says he will do bad things to her but even that doesn't make any real sense because she's his daughter and he needs her to complete the ritual and so on so on. Look movie just pick one strong motive and stick to it. All in all we have a film all about finding the fountain of youth where our main hero doesn't care about or have anything to do with finding the fountain of youth. I found my desire for the fountain greatly lessened. I actually have no interest in the fountain whatsoever so it's been a horrible mistake. Keep moving. <laughs> I'm not supposed to be here. Keep moving. And in addition to just the main plot, the same issue applies also to bigger subplots. We have this mermaid narrative that takes up an insane amount of runtime, and Jack or anyone else we know is never any part of it whatsoever. We have a fantastic, incredibly tense scene of them trying to catch a deadly mermaid, but then we realize we know none of these people and we don't care. We have a love relationship between this priest and this cute, innocent mermaid girl, but because Jack doesn't play any role in it and we don't know anything about these two people that do, it just comes off as very awkward and cringy. Like a live action adaptation of a cute streamer girl and an obsessive white knight fan in her chat who thinks they love each other even though they just met like five minutes ago. Bring the creature, cover its head. She has a name! Pray tell. The places this movie truly shines in is when Jack is actually after his own goals and interacting with people we actually know in relation to those goals, like when he and Barbosa are trying to get the chalices. And that just goes to show that this is what the movie always should have been. From the very beginning, have Jack be actively trying to get back the Black Pearl, and the reason he needs to find the fountain is to either use it or prevent Blackbeard from using it, because that is the only way he can ever get the Pearl back from him. That right there is a Jack Sparrow movie. That right there is one step closer to being a pirate's movie. This right here is something you get with your hamburger. The next key factor as to why Unstranger Tides feels like a fun little toy you find inside a Kinder Easter egg instead of being a true addition to a film franchise is because it carries no real inherent significance whatsoever, because of two reasons. Firstly, it offers no true lasting change when it comes to evolving and building the franchise it supposedly belongs in. When the movie begins, Barbosa has changed from a pirate into a privateer, but then at the end he turns back into the exact same pirate he was at the end of At World's End. The only tiny difference being that now he has a different ship and sword. Jack starts the movie out without the Black Pearl, as was the case before, and even though he does find the Pearl at the end, it's still stuck in a bottle and he doesn't actually have it now either. And so even though there per definition of the word is some change here, it's not really big enough to warrant its own full movie. The change that would have been big enough, like the backstory of Blackbeard sinking the Pearl and taking Barbosa's leg, that's not the story this movie tells, because it's too busy focusing on stuff that doesn't end up having any lasting effects on anything. The fountain has no effect on anything. The Spanish have no effect on anything. Blackbeard has no effect on anything. Jack's relationship with Angelica has no effect on anything. And instead, she's ultimately just left behind as if she never existed. And that sums up the entire movie. We don't have any real permanent accomplishments and evolution to the overarching narrative, like with Will having to take Debbie Jones's place when he's defeated. But instead, the whole thing is like a disconnected side trip we take and then leave behind as we return back to the real storyline of the Pirates franchise. I gotta go. Jack! This is not over! Jack! Secondly, the movie has no real stakes or impact. 
See, the crux of the narrative is very similar to Dead Man's Chest in that we have a bunch of people and parties racing after one specific destination. Not the heart of Davy Jones, but the fountain of youth. The difference is that whereas in Dead Man's Chest people actually desperately needed the heart, here nobody needs the fountain. We already talked about Jack having no real reason or interest to find the fountain himself, but pay attention and you'll notice that the same mentality applies to everyone. Says he found a Ponce de Leon ship. The fountain of youth. I have a report. The Spanish have located the fountain of youth. I care not for King George or Tavignons that give hope for a healed limb. That give me left arm for chance of Blackbeard. I need years, Jack. Not for me. For my father. The British want the fountain because the Spanish want it. Barbosa wants the fountain because Blackbeard wants it. The Spanish want the fountain because other people might want it and they can't let that happen for reasons that are never fully delved into. Overall, people don't want the fountain because they want or need the fountain but just because some other people want it and so I guess we better get after it too. The only characters who truly do need the fountain itself are Blackbeard and therefore also Angelica. But that doesn't work either because that need is based solely on this prophecy about Blackbeard being killed in a few days that is never visually established. Plus, it doesn't make any real sense anyway because how does the Fountain of Youth protect you from being killed? I'm pretty sure babies are just as vulnerable to murder as adults. The only way it would have made sense was if Blackbeard was established as old and weak and therefore in need of getting his strength back. But based on what we see, he's doing pretty okay as is. I need years, Jack. From my father. I need years, Jack. From my father. In other words, we have a bunch of people going after a destination without having any true actual need to reach that destination. And so, what's so important about reaching it? Why should we care? If nothing bad happens if the fountain isn't found, why should we be worried about finding it? What are the stakes? The answer is, there aren't any stakes. No freedom of pirates on the line. No one last chance at reclaiming a lost life on the line. Instead, it just comes off as a fun little weekend vacation. And while movies can be fun, they can't be just for fun. You will fight against them, they will fight against you, all on account of him wanting to kill him. Where is the sense? Exactly. Because when a movie is just casual fun and also offers no lasting change to the overarching franchise narrative, that's not a real addition to a franchise. That's just a fun little momentary toy you find inside a Kinder Easter egg. I'd say the two earlier points already serve as big reasons as to why this movie comes off feeling like something you'd find in a Domino's pizza box demo disc instead of in theaters, but there's also a bunch of smaller individual reasons that all add up on top of that to ensure that this thing could never ever be a true worthy pirate sequel. The first very obvious thing is that this film doesn't elevate and build on what has come before it like every great sequel should. We have Blackbeard and zombies as bad guys here, but they don't seem like much when you compare them to Davy Jones and his crew or even the Black Pearl skeleton crew. We have a bunch of action and sword fights here but well I mean look. The visual side also doesn't hold up to what has come before. There is some effective cinematography in certain places like the mermaid scene, but most of the time this thing looks like a straight-to-DVD spin-off production compared to the look that Verbinski achieved in the previous entries. And it's like, if you have more money than before and you still can't give us visuals that offer something new and improved, then what's the point? There is some visual progression here, but unfortunately it's all just a bunch of very gimmicky recycled 3D shots where things just, you know. How is it we can never meet without you pointing something at me? 
What also doesn't help is that on top of not building on what came before, Unstranger Tides is also one of those sequels that completely nullifies the achievements made in what came before. For example, in the last two movies we went through this incredibly difficult journey of defeating Beckett and the East India Trading Company to obtain freedom for pirates and for all people in general. If we don't stand together, they'll hunt us down one by one till there'll be none left. Oh, we tame the seas for ourselves, aye, but open the door to Beckett and his ilk. But then this movie busts in like yoink. Jack, our sands be all but run. Where's the harm in joining the winning side? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? When Barbosa has joined the British Navy and openly says that there's nothing wrong with joining the winning side, that by default signifies that what we achieved before doesn't matter. That all those obstacles we overcame was for nothing. That pirates lost or will lose their freedom anyway. And even though later on it's revealed that Barbosa is just using the British Navy to get back at Blackbeard, you still need to visually back that up by resolving the relationship between pirates and the British. Instead of just introducing the British as having conquered pirates, and then forgetting them entirely. Also, the pacing of the movie is very weird compared to the earlier entries. Whereas before we always consistently switched between land and sea, here it's just left into bigger chunks. We spend the first 30 minutes in a city and then the next 30 minutes at sea and then the full remaining whatever hour in a jungle. Which not only does get pretty boring, it's also not pirates. And once you add individual reasons like these on top of what we discussed before, that's when you get a movie that although isn't necessarily terrible or even bad, just doesn't feel like a true sequel addition to a franchise, which in some ways is even worse. As much as even thinking about the fifth movie does give me depression, I'd rather have that one than this one, because at least that one is a proper pirate sequel that continues the story of our central characters in a meaningful way. This is more like something you'd find in, well, you get it.